Ding dong. 7 a.m. Am I the only person with a phone alarm that sounds like a doorbell? I swiped my phone to turn off the annoying sound. Today is the day to get the house ready to sell. I'm on curb appeal detail. Have you ever been trapped? That's how I feel with my life. I'm Neville Montana, age 21, a junior and a music major. I write music and play the guitar. I've even been in Vegas Got Talent, though I've never come close to winning. I laid in bed, quietly depressed. Everything in my life was imploding. I sat up and in the pre-dawn darkness found my guitar. Finally, my parents' year-long divorce finished a month ago. Dad had cheated, and the woman he cheated with is about to become my stepmom. Mom is selling our house and getting a two-bedroom condo for her and her new boyfriend. She invited me to move in with her, and her boyfriend. She started dating him during the divorce, so it's not cheating. Exactly. I haven't given her an answer. I quietly finger-picked the strings, playing each note separately, easing the ache in my chest. I softly played one of the songs from last semester's recital, a short piece by Mozart, For the end of semester recital, the professors usually assign a classical piece, and then they let you choose a piece. Time to get up. Ignoring the shower, I pulled on my old gym shorts, faded forest green with my old high school logo on the side and the elastic waist had lost some of its stretch, so I didn't so much as wear it, but let it hang on me. Old shoes and a sweatband finished my not-so-stylish outfit. Why wear a shirt? It's only going to be another something to wash later. My collection of skateboards was in my closet. Five total. One worn longboard covered in pride flags because I rode it everywhere. A couple of old favorites I used to ride back in high school. My stumpy board for when I wanted to do tricks. And the Terminator. A black, gray, and silver board that Dad had given me the Christmas before we discovered he'd been cheating. I've never ridden it. Can you love and hate somebody at the same time? I don't know how I should feel about Dad. I own one guitar, a Yamaha Acoustic FG850 with mahogany finish. I was lucky. Bought it cheap in a pawn shop. I brushed my teeth and thought about the day. Because of my employee discount at DIY Warehouse, I bought tons of things to spruce up the yard. What had Mrs. Gaines, the realtor, said? Because of the drought... Goodbye lawns in southern Nevada. Create a stylish rock garden, and I can easily get $20,000 more for your house. It's called curb appeal, so that is what I'm doing. The lawn was half dead anyway. I've divided the front yard into three zones. I spent an hour prepping the bed by the front porch, then spent another hour putting in a simple drip irrigation. Only the bed by the porch will get that luxury. Then I covered it with landscape fabric, and finally arranged the plants in what I hoped was a good combination. Golden lantana, purple coneflowers, a trellis to act as a privacy screen, as well as for the honeysuckle to grow on, a hibiscus that I hoped would grow into a bush, and I rounded the bed out with random plantings of blue salvia. It looked good to me. 9 a.m. I haven't even put down the lava rock and my arms ached already. I had bought a lot more plants than I realized, and had way more tubing than I thought. Mom's SUV pulled up. She climbed out carrying a couple of baskets, some silk flowers, a lot of solar light spikes, and a few beige cushions for the rockers on the porch because Mrs. Gaines had said, Your old tacky cushions will scare the buyers away. Mom didn't mind changing the cushions and pillows. Dad had chosen those cushions a couple of years ago, right before we learned of his affair. Balancing the fake flowers and a basket, Mom spoke nonstop on her phone, leaving me to do all the yard work. It didn't take her long to duck inside and into the air conditioning. Vegas was going to be hot today. Big surprise! I stretched and then cut open one of the bags of reddish-brown lava rock when a brand new dark green Chevrolet Silverado truck pulled into the driveway next to ours. New owners? 
The place had been vacant for six months and had weeds poking up in the rock garden by the front porch. The little bit of lawn it had left had yellowed and died. I chuckled. The dead lawn was a metaphor for my love life. The for sale sign had disappeared a week or two ago. Three people climbed out of the truck. An older guy in his mid-fifties, one guy who looked like he was approaching thirty, and the guy I stared at. He had driven the brand new green Chevrolet Silverado. The truck bed had a king-sized mattress still in plastic, a split king-sized box springs, both parts in plastic, a bed frame, and a heavy dark wood headboard. A second truck pulled up, driven by a woman just past fifty, and it carried a heavy dark wood cabinet that matched the bed frame. The guy that caught my attention, wind-blown brassy blonde hair that had been professionally cut recently, very tan skin, blue eyes, and high cheekbones. He hadn't shaved for a week, and the little bit of scruff looked sexy on him. Unless I missed my guess, based on the definition in his arms and his lean waist and muscled legs, I'd bet he was a competitive swimmer, or had been, and still swam. He glanced up, met my eyes, and caught me looking at him. He gave me a half smile and a slight chin lift. Of all the emotions I felt right now, loneliness wasn't one of them. Oh crap, he had noticed me checking him out. I gave him a chin lift back and quickly looked at the bag of lava rock at my feet and jabbed a hole in it. Could he be the guy moving in, or is he helping his folks move in? Just my luck. It would be him moving in while me and mom are moving out. I got back to work, but not for long. He came jogging over. I tried not to smile as he said, Hi, I'm Jansen Vance, and I'm moving in next door. Can you help us a second? I had been on my knees planting a basket of gold. That's the name of a plant, not an actual basket. When I leaned up and got a close-up view of his toned and sexy legs. Sure, I said. I gave him my hand to pull me up. His hand was strong and firm, and he smelled lightly of a musky deodorant. And up close, he was three inches taller than me, and his eyes twinkled, and his mouth had a slight smile to it. I'm in lust. I forced myself to stare at his eyes, and not the way his nipples and pecs stretched his t-shirt, or the leanness of his waist, or the definition in his arms. Oh, God, I'm staring again. Something electric passed through his hand to mine. This hadn't happened with any other man I met. Did Jansen feel it as well? I still held his hand, or did he hold mine, when I remembered my manners and let go? I said, Neville, Montana, like the state, but I've never been to the state. Why was I suddenly nervous? Well, Neville, Montana, he said. My dad, Steve, has a bad back and can't lift. My mom, Claire, is fighting carpal tunnel and doesn't have the arm strength. My brother, Cliff, and I already took a few things in, but the mattress is awkward as hell, and there is no way the two of us can lift the cabinet. I don't know what my grandparents were thinking when they gifted me their monster bedroom set for a wedding present. Wedding? I asked. My hopes shattered. Jansen wasn't single. Hiding my disappointment, we walked over to the other yard, and I said, you're getting married? Jansen's voice became bitter, and he said, Was getting married. Patricia's ex came into town, and they rekindled their old fling two weeks ago. Why? I asked. Damn, Jansen was straight, too. Jansen gave a humorless chuckle and blew a breath out. According to her, Ashford is more of a man, down under, than me. Talk about shallow, I said. One bullet seriously dodged. Did you lose a lot of money? My parents and I footed the bill because her parents couldn't, Jansen said. We lost our deposits for the caterers, the photographer, and the flowers, and there was a cancellation fee for the venue on top of the deposit. She had to have a princess wedding dress with real crystals, another $4,500 down the drain. All told, just over nineteen grand, with another four grand for the ring. She wasted $23,000, I asked. And the house, does she own it too? Are you going to sell? Jansen gave an odd, almost angry snort. 
That was my wedding present to us. I paid the down payment right before she dumped me. It's mine, and only mine. Her name is nowhere near the title. I am keeping the house. After quick introductions with his family, Jansen, his brother Cliff, and I wrestled the giant mattress out of the truck, across the yard, and turned it sideways to get through the door. It was heavy, but the real problem was it was too big and too awkward, and then dragging it down the hall to the master bedroom was an exercise in torture. Its plastic protective wrap never made it to the bedroom. The king-sized mattress was easy compared to the giant cabinet. It took a half an hour to somehow get it through the main door, twist it, find a carpet to place under it, swear at it, drag it, somehow tilt it sideways, more swearing, remove the doors, lots more swearing, and we finally shifted the damn thing into the bedroom. Minor miracle, we didn't scratch the light oak hardwood floors in the process, but we did leave a nasty ding on one of the walls, punched right through the drywall. The only way you're getting that thing out is with an axe, or a team of linebackers, Cliff said. Jansen thanked me, and they drove off. I returned to planting salvias and laying out the red volcanic rock around the plants. It took some time, but I was pleased with the results. Mom came out and placed a couple solar light stakes and said, It looks so nice I almost don't want to move. That was when the realtor showed up. Mrs. Gaines must be about 60, dyed blonde hair and rhinestone glasses. Good news, I've brought the sign, she sang. While she and Mom figured out where the sign would go, I ran the wheelbarrow back to the garage to get another couple bags of rocks, which I never laid. While Mrs. Gaines and Mom went inside to talk about how to stage the house and escape the noon heat, I had the honor of digging the hole for the giant for sale sign. I think I had underestimated how long redesigning the yard would take because, working by myself, it's going to need another Saturday. The two trucks returned as I dumped the last bag of lava rocks. The trucks were loaded to the brink with a dining room table, several chairs, a couch, love seat, a 75-inch flat screen, a sense around stereo system for the flat screen, a floating console, and a large area rug, plus some end tables and bed tables and two coffee tables, plus a lot of boxes. They sure can fit a lot of junk in those trucks. I was cleaning up my tools when Jansen yelled, Nev, give us a hand. I'm making pizza later to say thanks. If he didn't mind this dirty, sweaty, probably smelly, definitely not stylish me, then whatever. Name one college guy that won't do anything for free pizza. Besides, I didn't have any plans. Wait a second. Did Jansen say he was making it? I'm in love. Too bad he's straight. It took a little longer to unload the trucks because Jansen kept favoring his hand. An hour later, with everything dumped in the living room, his dad said, A heating pad and some aspirin have my name on it. We'll take a rain check on the pizza. Cliff, you coming or staying? I'm sure your wife won't mind if you have a boy's night out, Jansen said. Besides, somebody has to help me celebrate my first night in the new place. Let me make a phone call, Cliff said. Nev, Jansen said. I owe you, and it's free pizza. Get your friends to come over and make it a housewarming party, his mom said. Jansen gave a tired laugh and said, When there is place for them to sit. Cliff rubbed his shoulder and said, Nev, wait until you try Jansen's pizza. He fills the crust with cheese and dusts it with parmesan and oregano. It's the best. He works at a bakery, do me a favor, and knows all the tricks. Sounds great, I said. You can put anything on the pizza except sausage. I'll be back as soon as I'm fabulous. I pretended not to notice the odd look Cliff gave me. I also pretended not to notice the odd smile Jansen gave me as I walked away. Was he checking me out? No, wishful thinking. Jansen had a female ex-fiancé, so this man was obviously straight. After a hot shower... I changed into blue and green surfer jams. My skin tone handles cool colors better than warm colors. A black wife beater, because it makes people focus on my blue eyes and not my nose. What can I say? I broke it at baseball practice back in middle school and it has a funny bump in it. Besides, my eyes are my best feature.
my only best feature. Green flip-flops let my toes air out. A soft touch of eyeliner, a little lip gloss, a bit of product in my hair to give it that casual windblown look, and a pair of sapphire studs in my ears. They help my eyes seem a little bluer. I kept the makeup low-key because I wanted a more natural look. To finish the ensemble, I added a thin silver neck chain and a rainbow bracelet an old boyfriend had made for me right before he joined the Air Force. We still emailed, occasionally, but we had grown apart several thousand miles apart. I also brought my acoustic guitar. Hanging out with new people always makes me nervous, so sometimes I use my guitar as an icebreaker or as a way to simply keep my fingers busy. Another car had shown up while I was getting ready, a silver Honda Accord. I rang the doorbell. Ding dong. Jansen opened the door and his smile was shy and beautiful. He softly said, You look nice. Thanks, I said. The amazing smell of fresh-baked pizza and garlic bread greeted me. Jansen wore a red oven mitt and held a pizza cutter. Just in time, I'm about to pull the pizza from the oven. The new girl is Cliff's wife, Holly. She knows how to make my sense around come to life. Well, da, yelled a female voice from deeper in the house. I work at Bixby's and sold it to you. Cliff and Holly came up to me. We shook hands, but only Holly noticed the rainbow bracelet. She frowned at my subtle makeup. Cliff looked at Jansen, elbowed his brother in the ribs, and said, Is this the same guy that helped us today? Somebody cleans up, bro. Patricia could take lessons. Holly and Cliff led me into the future living room. Each held a Coors and were arranging pieces of sound equipment. I leaned the guitar against the couch. Ding, the oven timer chimed. Many boxes of kitchen equipment were open on the dining room table, and I followed Jansen into the kitchen. He still favored his hand. Let me, I said, taking the oven glove from him and putting it on. I pulled out two large circular pizza stones with pizzas from the oven. One pizza had nothing but pepperoni. The other had onions, bacon, pineapple, and small slices of red pepper. Don't worry, Jansen said, as I set the pizza stones on the counter. It's a sweet red pepper, not one of those firecracker peppers. It sounds odd, but it's Holly and Cliff's favorite pizza combo. Too bad, I said. I like my men spicy. I mean, I like spicy food. How did that slip out of my mouth? If Jansen noticed my Freudian slip, he didn't react. Though we had chairs, every flat surface was covered with boxes, so we ate pizza and drank Coors sitting on the floor. Between bites, I played a little guitar and relaxed a little. At the end of each song, Jansen smiled and said, Play something else. I didn't mean to show off, but Jansen seemed to like it. I must have played ten songs. After dinner, we got out the drill and the level, and with me and Jansen holding the floating console, Cliff drilled the holes in the studs while Holly used the electric screwdriver to attach the console to the wall, leaving six inches between it and the floor. In 30 minutes, we had the large flat screen set up, and while Holly and Cliff figured out the wires for the sound system, Jansen and I moved boxes to their appropriate rooms, arranged the couch, and generally made the chaos even more chaosier. I have another load of boxes, Jansen said, and the last of the furniture coming tomorrow, and then my old apartment is cleaned out. Have you ever noticed that whenever you move, your relatives give you all their junk? We sat around binging some show I'd never heard of, kicking back and drinking beer. Jansen still favored his hand, so I said, Give me your hand. He did, and I started gently massaging it. He winced as I found the tender spot, so I eased off the pressure and carefully rubbed it. After a minute, Jansen mumbled, You're hired. Can you go a little harder? Both Cliff and I snickered. Jansen had a bewildered look about his eyes. What did I say? All men are perverts, Holly grumbled. Jansen suddenly smiled. I wasn't the only person who had a Freudian slip tonight, and he said, Nev, do you do shoulders? Will you do mine? Sure, I said. Lay down. Holly interrupted. Jansen, you sure that's a good idea? Yeah, why? he asked. Cliff jumped in and said, Holly's still mad at you. Patricia is her best friend. 
Holly shifted position enough to grab another slice of pizza and said, Ashford might be rich and good-looking and drive a Maserati, but it's all your fault Patricia left you. Why? I asked. She's a model, Holly said, as if that answered everything. Cliff muttered something so low I think I was the only person who heard it, he said, for toothpaste commercials. Jansen gave an odd smile and said, You're mad at me because your best friend cheated on me with her ex. Why don't you get mad at her? Cliff leaned over and grabbed the last slice of pizza. Bro, who can understand girl logic? Not me. No wonder I win every argument, Holly said. Jansen quipped. He just lets you win. You two are idiots, Holly said, her eyes narrowing. Nev, you're gay, right? Stop hitting on Jansen. He's taken. I shrugged, suddenly feeling odd. I'm not hitting on him, and yes, I am gay. Is that an issue? Honey, so what if Jansen's neighbor is gay, Cliff said. Any more beer? I tossed him a beer. Cliff and Holly looked at each other, but it was Jansen who spoke. Holly, Patricia dumped me two weeks ago. I am not taken. Nev, shoulders. I overdid something, and they're really stiff. Cliff took hold of his wife's hand and whispered, Somebody should apologize before she makes our new friend uncomfortable. Holly looked at me, pursed her lips, and said, Nev, forgive me. I am not trying to be offensive. I'm just looking out for my brother-in-law's broken heart. I don't want to see Jansen hurt again. What does that have to do with me being gay? I asked. Jansen kind of chuckled. She's afraid I'll rebound on the first cute person that shows me a bare shoulder and a little kindness, like half-naked you helping us out today. You do realize that those shorts left nothing to the imagination. Cliff chuckled, nothing at all, bro, and he saluted me with his beer. Jansen grew serious, and while he was laying down on the floor, said, Holly, I had a difficult time right after the breakup, but I'm fine now. Nev, shoulders, please. Jansen, Holly said, when you're ready, I'll set you up with a nice girl. Let me show you a picture of my co-worker. I knelt beside Jansen and began working my thumbs into his shoulders. Jansen whispered, Sorry, Holly, I won't be dating for a long time. Holly patted her pocket and said, Cliff, I lost my phone again. Can you find it? Cliff pulled up an app on his phone and said, Find my phone says it's here, babe. Do you want me to call you? Sunday morning, I made some coffee and took a couple aspirin because I fought a mild hangover. Did we drink that much last night? Proof is in the headache. I dressed in similar stylish clothes as yesterday. Old gym shorts, old shoes, old sweatband. While Mom made her weekly visit to church, I set everything out for my front yard masterpiece. Since I had so many extra salvias and cone flowers, I took five of each over to Jansen's yard and decorated the space near his front porch and hurried back to my work. The second half of the first zone had a faded patch of lawn. It would take me hours to dig it up and cart it to the garbage can, but since this area wouldn't need a drip irrigation system, it only took 30 minutes to roll out the landscape fabric and pin it down. I was ready to head back to the garage to bring out more bags of rocks when the two trucks pulled up. Down payment on a house, a new truck, and he paid for a wedding. Jansen has some serious money. With his looks and the body to match, Patricia was a fool to let this guy get away. Holly needn't have worried about me. If only Jansen liked guys. Sigh. Dreading hauling the rocks, I yelled over to Jansen and Cliff. Need a hand? Bro, are you trying to get more free pizza? Cliff yelled back. And I yelled, you know it. Jansen laughed and yelled, that's so last night. I'm making mushroom pancetta and spinach calzones today with a mushroom marinara simmered in the crock pot. We unloaded the trucks and then Cliff and Steve left, promising to be back later. Time to stop procrastinating. My yard waited. I had just bought out another two bags of rocks when Jansen walked over. My turn to ask, need a hand? He said. I can't make pizza, I said, but I can buy the beer. We spent an hour laying out the rocks and talking. I learned all about Jansen's failed marriage, and I told him about my classes and how we're moving. 
one thing I did learn. I'll need a lot more rocks. Somewhere in there, I agreed to help Jansen with his yard. That night, I helped him arrange his furniture and stack the boxes in the spare bedroom. While we were making the giant king-sized bed, we got to talking. He asked, Did you ever think about moving out? All the time, I said. I want my own place, but I also need to pay tuition. What about when you move? He asked. Selling the house is enough to afford a two-bedroom condo, I said, but I feel weird about moving in. Mom has started seeing this guy. She's serious about him, but though she doesn't mind living with the guy, she doesn't want to get married. Bad divorce? Jansen asked. Messy divorce, I said. Mom got the house in place of alimony. She believes that selling the house is a bigger amount than 20 years of alimony, so she thinks it screws Dad over in the long run. Maybe she's right. She often spends nights at her boyfriend's place. Sleeping with him? Jansen asked. Didn't ask, and she didn't tell. Some subjects are too awkward to think about, I said. About seven, Jansen's mom and dad and Cliff and Holly came over to help. Sometime during calzones and beer and pay-for-view soccer, Jansen and I swapped numbers. As I lay on the floor watching the flat screen, Jansen asked, Can I return the favor? What favor was that? I asked. This, he said, and began massaging my shoulders. I whispered, I'll pay you by the hour. Don't stop. Holly's eyes rolled like a slot machine. Over the next two weekends, Jansen and I put in a new drip irrigation system in his yard, arranged the plants and rocks until his yard looked better than ours. We also worked on my yard. Jansen was strong. He attributed it to all the bags of flour he lifted. I attributed it to his early morning swim workouts. Some psychiatrist once said that looks might be the gateway to getting to know a person, but personality is what keeps a person around long term. As I got to know Jansen, I discovered that I liked him as a person. I liked working with him. I liked talking to him. I liked the way he smiled. I liked the casual way he bit his lip when he was thinking. I liked the way he made pizza and calzones and chocolate chip cookies. I just liked him. He even invited me over to practice my guitar while he organized his house or made something in the kitchen because a music major has to spend hours practicing and he loved the company. So did I. Maybe he was lonely too. Friday afternoon, we went to DIY Warehouse to pick up more rocks. Once home, we were taking them out of his truck and stacking them in his garage to get ready for tomorrow morning. It was late afternoon. Mom was out with her boyfriend. The setting sun cast a golden light that highlighted Jansen's profile. Something ached inside me. This man, this beautiful man, woke something in my heart. Was I falling in love? No, that can't be right. Who ever heard of a person falling in love in only a few weeks? Besides, I'm moving as soon as the house sells. We carried the sacks of rocks into the garage, and my heart stopped. We looked at each other, and I leaned over and lightly kissed him. A light stubble was on his chin. His lips were dry and instantly tensed, then relaxed. I'm sorry, I forgot you weren't gay, I said, pulling back. The heat rushed to my cheeks. He took a breath. I took a breath. The corner of his mouth tweaked into a small half-grin, and he said, If you like someone, why let a label get in the way? Let's try that kiss again. This time, I'm ready. Jansen kissed me. We kissed again. This is wrong, I whispered. It's too soon since your fiancé left. I've mourned Patricia long enough, he whispered. Then I heard you sing, and I decided I don't want to be sad anymore. He ran a hand down my arm and held my hand. His eyes were wide and moist and stared into mine. My heart beat a little faster. A small smile flicked across my lips. He hesitantly leaned in. His heart beat as fast as mine. Our lips met, his breath warm on my skin. I pushed him back a little, and we leaned on the workbench. His lips were firm. He hugged me close, and our mouths opened, our tongues touched. His lips tasted faintly of salt, and he smelled lightly of musk, and his hair had the soft smell of his strawberry shampoo. 
something electric jolted through me. Jansen, too. We backed a few inches away, staring at each other, breathing hard. Gordon's Gourmet Burgers, he whispered. What? I asked. I haven't been on a date since the breakup. I'm kind of scared, but right now I really want to go out with you, he said. Was us making out a mistake? I asked. He softly nodded. Maybe, but I don't regret it. How fast can you make yourself fabulous and bring your guitar? Your voice is beautiful. Give me fifteen, I said. I gave him a quick kiss that turned out to be not so quick and ran back to the house. A quick shower, black shorts, a lime green loose t-shirt, a bit of product in my hair, a quick bit of eyeliner, and a light dusting of green on my eyelids, and fifteen minutes later we were in his truck driving the streets of Vegas. He wore khaki shorts and a tribal print pullover shirt and a cologne that made me fall in love with him again. We held hands as we drove and banished the loneliness from our lives. Gordon's Gourmet Burgers, home of the nuclear cholesterol bomb, is kind of famous in these parts. The bomb is a burger so big that it takes four people to finish it, and their jalapeno fries are spicy enough to clear sinuses. Of course we ordered the nuclear cholesterol bomb. Huge didn't describe the gigantic, bacon-laden, pepper-jack cheese-stuffed, jalapeno-filled, tomatoes, lettuce, onion, avocado, with the spicy pepper mayonnaise all on an onion bun that looked more like a loaf of bread. Why did we even order fries? Four people could never eat this. It would take six or eight people to finish this monster. We took our food outside to one of their picnic tables, and we ate and talked, and he asked me to play. Sometimes I finger-picked, sometimes I strummed. All the time he watched my fingers, mesmerized. When I sang, his eyes glazed over, and he smiled. We drove over to a high-rise parking complex and drove to the top level. The view of Vegas was spectacular. About two blocks away was the high roller, the giant Ferris wheel in Vegas. I'd never been on it, but I liked coming here because seeing the city and hotels and the casinos and all the people tickled my imagination. All the life around us made my songs become more vibrant. As the sun set into a gold horizon, I played. I played a song I'd been practicing for the end of semester recital, a piece by Bach in G minor, and I finger-picked every note and hummed the melody. If I played a song he knew, Jansen sang with me. It didn't matter that he couldn't keep a tune, and our harmony was off. We had fun. As the sun set below the horizon and the lights illuminated the high roller, I set my guitar down, and Jansen and I kissed. It didn't have the need or desperation from before. It was sweet and gentle and tender and lasted until the lights of the parking complex came on. We went home, holding hands, and we kissed goodnight before heading to our own houses. Most of the burger and fries became dinner for our next date. Over the next two months, we had twenty dates, more or less. Jansen became somebody very special. We also looked through paint samples, and once the yards were done, we painted his house, first the bedrooms, then the living room, and finally the other rooms. We both chose a light, creamy beige, the color of white chocolate, with a lighter shade for the ceilings and trim, and a darker shade for the focal wall in the living room. I helped put up a ceiling fan in the bedroom and some nice brushed silver drop-down track lights in the living room and dining room. Sometimes Cliff and Holly and Steve would come over and help. Jansen's mom wore a brace on her wrist and mostly stayed out of the way, but did make dinner sometimes. In a way, Jansen's place was slowly becoming our place. His mom walked into the kitchen once and caught me and Jansen kissing. She sort of smiled, wiped an eye, and left us alone. Holly caught me and Jansen kissing by his green truck and turned her scowling face away. Whenever I thought about Jansen, a gentle melody formed in my mind. I wrote it down and played with it and words came to me. It was a traditional song with three verses and a chorus, but one I would finger pick to get the notes exactly the way I wanted. It started in the key of G minor and for the final verse and chorus it brightened to a key of C. I imagined kneeling as I sang the final chords, and immediately after the song, I'd say, Jansen, will you marry me? As soon as I thought that, a giant case of nerves flooded my body and my heart sped up. Would I have the courage? The song had to be perfect. 
though Mrs. Gaines, the realtor, brought people over for tours and had three open houses. Nobody made an offer. Mom thought the asking price too high. Mrs. Gaines wanted us to repaint and move most of our stuff into storage. Lived-in clutter turns people off, and skateboards, and guitars, and look at the color of your archaic sofa. Dorm room chic? Not on my watch. Do you think we are trying to attract poor college students? I am not targeting that demographic. I am looking for a young, upwardly mobile family that needs room to grow. Say a couple with two or three children, and with extra money to throw around. As charming as this home is, we must update it to make the money she complained as she pushed up her rhinestone glasses. Mom, we're still living here, and I have finals coming up, I said. Mrs. Gaines put her hands on her hips and said, You'll have to endure. Trust me, I will sell this place. Mom shrugged. Was it wrong of me to think that the only reason Mrs. Gaines wanted the asking price so high was so she could get a bigger commission? Three days later, Mrs. Gaines brought paint swatches and five gallons of early morning dawn mint paint. The color was more of a depressing gray than gray-green mint and not warm and friendly. It reminded me of that horror movie where an alien is chasing everybody through the dark, depressing tunnels. I wouldn't live in a place that color, but what did I know? Jansen's place had become light and sunny and open. He didn't mind skateboards or guitars. I could live in a place like that. Sunday afternoon, Jansen helped me move the furniture out of the living room, and we had taped plastic to the floor, taped off the windows, removed the ceiling fan, and had begun painting the odd, depressing gray-green color. It looked worse on the walls than it did in the paint can. Even aliens wouldn't run through that. Did Mrs. Gaines realize how dark it would make this room? Mom was in the kitchen putting together a mushroom and pepperoni lasagna, Jansen had brought over a tray of rolled-out onion-infused bread dough that would eventually become garlic bread, and I had bought a 12-pack of Coors. The place smelled of rising bread, pasta sauce, and paint. All the doors and windows were open, so the air conditioner was off, and the oven was set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It was a sauna. Jansen wore an old gray t-shirt, and I wore an old shirt with the sleeves ripped off. Of course, I was wearing the athletic shorts that hung on me. I wasn't going to ruin anything good by getting paint spilled on it. We sweated as we painted. The plan was to paint this odd gray-green color for the walls with an off-white gray for the ceiling and trim and doors. I'm not a fan. Jansen and I talked as we painted, comfortable with each other. We hadn't gotten past the holding hands and kissing and dating stage. After the mess of his wedding, I don't think he's ready for us to be serious. But just being with him made me happy. Ding dong. Somebody stepped through the open front door. What are you doing? You're not supposed to be here, Mrs. Gaines screamed. I looked at the realtor as if she were crazy. Jansen looked at the realtor as if she were crazy. Mom squeaked out a simple, hi, come in. And then she looked at the realtor as if she were crazy. Mrs. Gaines pushed up her rhinestone-covered glasses and screamed, I have three couples coming right now, and two more in an hour, then a two-hour open house. This place is a mess, and your furniture is outside, and you're painting that disgusting color, and making food. I still see skateboards and a guitar. This house is not staged at all. I needed to take new pictures for the website. Oh, my God, look at the mess in the kitchen. Nev, I bet you didn't even make your bed, and dirty clothes are everywhere. It's going to look like a dorm room. This is a disaster. Didn't you guys read my text? Mom ran to her phone, which was lying on the counter, scrolled through the screen, and said, I've checked all this week, and you never sent a text. Do you want to see? This is the paint you bought, Mrs. Gaines, I said, trying to be helpful. And yes, I did make my bed, and my dirty clothes are in the wash. Jansen put the paint lid on the paint can and said, When do they get here? Do we have time to finish painting? If not, what do we do about the wet paint brushes and wet rollers? Mrs. Gaines checked her phone and yelled, No, 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 I thought I sent a text, but I never did. Today is ruined. Nobody will buy this dumb now. I want all of you out of here immediately, and don't come back for four hours. Ding dong. Oh no, Mrs. Gaines yelled, They're here. Can we come in? The first potential buyers had arrived. A pair of women in their late twenties. Sure, excuse the chaos, I said. Are you the owners? We love what you did with the yard, one of the women said. Thanks, 
Mom's the owner, and Jansen is my boyfriend, I said. And they are leaving right now, Mrs. Gaines said. The next minute was a pure whirlwind of terror, and somehow me, Jansen, my guitars, my skateboards, the lasagna, the beer, the garlic bread, and an armload of random clothes found ourselves at Jansen's place, and somehow we put the rollers and brushes in a bucket of water in the middle of the front porch. Jansen and I were laughing. Mom had gone to her boyfriend's place, also laughing. Mrs. Gaines became all frustrated smiles and went into real estate mode. As we were in his kitchen, Jansen kissed me and then smelled his sweaty shirt. How can you stand to be around me? I don't mind, I said. Jansen chuckled and said, I do. Why don't you get dinner started while I get showered and dressed? Then I'll finish dinner while you shower. Sounds good, I flirted. Except we'll save water if I join you. Jansen almost blushed. I lightly kissed him on his cheek. Never mind, I'll get dinner started. Save me some hot water. If you change your mind, you can wash my back. Now he did blush. I want to ask you something later, but let me get things ready, he stammered. A moment later, the water came on. Did he want me to join him and was being shy? How long had we been together? A couple months? Was this a subtle invitation that wasn't supposed to sound like an invitation? Should I surprise him? What if I broke what was between us by being too assertive? What if I wasn't assertive enough? When in a relationship is taking things too far? Or am I going too fast or slow? When is it time for the next step? He'd just broken up with a cheating fiance. Jansen's brain wasn't in the right headspace for anything more. He'd let me know when he was ready. I set the temperature and put the lasagna and bread into the oven. My heart beat a little too fast. My hands were a little too cold. I always think better with a guitar. I began playing Bach in G minor, and then another song. Am I overthinking this whole mess, or underthinking? Since the end semester recital was this week, I went back and played Bach in G minor, and then played the song I had written for Jansen, softly singing. A soft noise disturbed me. I stopped playing. I stopped breathing when I saw who was in the doorway. Jansen, his eyes closed. He had product styling his hair and smelled of an expensive cologne. He wore a loose flowing linen shirt, open at the neck, and light khaki pants and leather sandals. He had one piece of jewelry, a copper chain bracelet on his left wrist. The way you play, he whispered, it's beautiful. I've never heard that song before. A smile fluttered about my lips and I asked, have you been listening long? Long enough, he said. What's that song called? How much should I tell him? We'd only been together for a couple of months, but my feelings were real. Would I cross the line if I told him the truth? Would he be offended? Well, my fingers gently played the melody, I said, don't laugh. It's called, Don't Let Me Go. I know it sounds corny, but I wrote it for you because, you see, um, I love you. He inhaled a long, slow breath. He exhaled a longer, slower breath. Then he kissed me. I laid your clothes on the bed, he said. Go make yourself fabulous. I'll get the wine. I set the guitar down and almost skipped down the short hallway to the bathroom. He'd set out a large forest green towel, my khaki shorts and my tie-dye shirt on the bed. My lip gloss and eyeliner were on the bathroom counter. My silver necklace and rainbow bracelet lay next to them. What was Jansen going to ask me? With the way he was dressed, was he asking me on a special date? He knew I liked music. Maybe he had concert tickets. Did he want to go to a concert tonight? No, he liked trucks, so maybe the truck rally was this weekend. Maybe he was ready to take our relationship a step further. Maybe he only wanted to talk. It didn't matter. Whatever Jansen wanted to do, I'm ready. Sometime during my shower, I thought I heard a ding-dong Part of me was a little disappointed that Jansen didn't join me. I wrapped the towel around me and stepped into the bedroom. Soft jazz played. The scent of candle wax and roses graced the air. Tonight must be very special for him. I wouldn't disappoint. I dressed, but took a second look at the tie-dye shirt. Would he mind if I borrowed one of his shirts? They were nicer. If he wants me to take it off, I'll take it off. I chuckled at that thought as I traded shirts. 
I hurried with my hair and makeup, becoming fabulous. I had just put on the lip gloss, lime this time, when I heard something odd. Raised voices came from the living room. Jansons and two women? I opened the bedroom door and quietly walked down the hall. The sky had darkened, but the dining room had the warm radiance of candlelight. I know you still love me, an unknown woman whined. That's why you have to get back together with me. I crept forward, cripping my lip gloss like a knife. Jansen replied, You were the one who cheated, so no, I don't. She made a mistake, but you still love Patricia and need to give her a second chance, the second woman said, but I knew that voice. Holly, Cliff's wife. Then the other woman must be Patricia, the ex fiance who dumped Jansen for some guy named Ashford. I imagined Jansen folding his arms and trying to be patient. Holly, let me be clear. Any feelings I had vanished when Patricia cheated. Discussion over. I want both of you to leave my house. Now. I'm not leaving until you take Patricia back, Holly said. Patricia's voice became sweetness and light. I love what you've done with our place. It's nice. It's not ours, Patricia. Jansen said. Nev and I have put a lot of time and a lot of work in this place. Your name is not on the title and never will be. Nev, Nev, Nev. Him again, Holly said. He is just a loser college kid and he's not even cute. Look at Patricia. She's a model. I strained a little. Ouch. I always thought I was good looking. I'm not a model, but I'm not ugly. Maybe I don't want to hear the rest of this conversation. Shut up, Holly, Jansen yelled. Nev is beautiful and he sings like an angel. I fell in love with him that first night he sang for us. I can't believe my brother married someone as rude as you. Patricia, if anybody's name is going to be on the title with mine, it's his. There is as much of his sweat and blood in this place as mine, maybe more. There is nothing of you here. Holly tried another tactic and said, Patricia, why don't you tell what happened between you and Ashford? Jansen will understand that it's just the two of you now. Patricia raised her voice. Ashford was a jerk. He told me to grow up. Can you believe it? I wasn't woman enough for him. He told me that marriage was more than sex, and that a wife whose only skill was being pretty and sat on her butt all the time painting her nails was useless. Do you know how much work it is to be this beautiful? Do you know what he said? So what if you're pretty this year? What will you have going for you next year? Nobody understands me. The cheapskate wanted me to get a job and go back to college. He wanted us to be equals, like split the finances right down the middle, and he expected me to do chores. He showed me the chore list. He did laundry on even days while I did dishes, and then we switched on odd days. I'm not getting dishpan hands. That's a maid's work, and he wasn't going to hire one. When I reminded him I was a model and he had enough money to take care of me, he called me a high-maintenance leech. He wanted an independent career woman who he could have intelligent conversations with. He wanted us to have two incomes so we could have a nice house and amazing vacations around the world, maybe even own a second house in France. I don't speak French, but he does. I'm not stupid. I can have intelligent conversations. Now, Jansen, you're only a baker, but you love me, so take me back. Jansen chuckled. I think I like this guy, and I agree with him. I want someone who is making something of his life. I want someone who knows how to get his hands dirty, because I'm terrible at fixing stuff. I want someone who is there for me when I'm down, and who will let me be there when he's down. I want a man I can talk for hours with, or sing with, or lay on the couch snuggling while we watch some show. I want someone I can love, and loves me back. Holly scoffed and yelled, You can't mean Nev. Why settle for a second-rate loser when you could marry Patricia? She's a model, she's gorgeous, and she's famous. You should feel honored that she would consider marrying you. Nev is my soulmate, Jensen said. Come on out, beautiful. I peeked around the corner. You knew I was here? Jensen took my hand and pulled me out. I heard the shower turn off, and a few minutes later the bedroom door opened. Yeah, I knew. Are you wearing my shirt? I gripped his hand and kissed him. I turned to Holly and Patricia and said, The summer recital is this week. 
Why don't you attend and see what kind of a loser I am? Then I'll come to your recital. I'd love to compare styles. Holly glared at me and said, I don't play a stupid instrument. Then you have no right to look down on those who do, Jansen said. I turned to Patricia. Look, honey. Fashion 101. I can't believe I'm telling this to a model. Part of your problem is that you don't wear the right colors for your skin tones. And your lipstick? Tone it down. Nobody sees your face. The other problem? You don't understand how to be loyal to your men. So you've lost two. And one of them you've lost twice. I bet Ashford found out you are nothing but a cheater. And he kicked you out. Patricia started shouting. He didn't like it when I told him I left my fiancé for him, and my parents won't let me go back home, and everybody is disgusted with me, and Cliff won't let me stay with Holly. So you see, I have to stay with you, Jansen. I don't have any place left to go. Well, Patricia, Holly, and Jansen watched, I went into the candlelit dining room, smelling the delicious aroma of a fresh-baked lasagna, found a pen, and stood in front of Patricia. You've burned a lot of people. I said, holding out the pen. I'm going to tell you an ancient secret to rebuilding friendships. Write it down on your hand. Patricia took the pen and said, What can a loser college kid know? I smiled and said, Write $23,000 on your hand. She looked at me as if I was crazy. Holly slightly shook her head and asked, Why? Jansen wrapped his arm around me, softly chuckling, and said, Those are the wedding fees I had to pay. You have 30 days to pay me back before I see a lawyer. Don't worry, I kept all the receipts, and it won't be very hard for me to get witness statements about how you left me with all the bills. You can't mean that, Holly said. Jansen gave her a mean smile and said, You're one of my witnesses. Don't forget, lying in court is a crime. Holly shut up. But you love me, Patricia said. You wouldn't make me pay. I don't have any money. You squashed my love like a bug under your shoe, Jansen said, holding me tighter. And you expect me to care? Ding dong. We all turned and looked as the front door slowly opened. Jansen, is it okay if I come in? I feel weird asking this, but why is my wife here, and why are you holding Nev like you're a couple? Cliff said, eyeing me and Jansen, and then he looked at Patricia and Holly. Then he looked at the romantic dining room. I answered my own question. Congratulations, boys. You two have fun with your romantic dinner. Holly, we talked about this, and I guess we are going to talk about respecting other people's boundaries again, and you need to apologize to my brother and his boyfriend. Patricia, just leave. Nobody wants you around. She's my best friend, Holly said. I made a terrible mistake, and Jansen has to forgive me and take me back, Patricia said. Cliff folded his arms and gave Holly the stare. I'm getting really tired of this. I'm not coming between you and your friend. You either leave with me or you leave with Patricia, but you are leaving my brother and his boyfriend alone. Jansen fiddled in his pocket and pulled something out. Before any of you go, I want you to understand that I love Nev. He is the most beautiful man I've ever met, and I could listen to him sing for hours. Maybe he doesn't realize it, but he helped me heal after Patricia betrayed me, and I will always be grateful. Nev, would you move in with me? Jansen handed me a key. I accepted it and kissed him. We were still kissing when Cliff led Patricia and Holly out the front door. His last words were, Have fun tonight, bros. Epilogue After a little bartering, the two women that had come the day we were trying to paint the living room bought the house. They didn't like the interior color Mrs. Gaines had chosen. Nobody did, but went with a pale blue-gray. I moved in with Jansen over the next week, and Mom and her boyfriend moved into the condo. The last we heard of Patricia, she had borrowed money from Holly to fly to New York to apply for a modeling agency, but is currently working as a waitress. Holly never got her money back. Patricia will be sending court-mandated payments for the next five years until her debt to Jansen is paid. That was a year ago. It had taken me the last week to get our backyard set up just right. Pale violet tablecloths covered the seven tables, and they gleamed with brilliant white china and sparkling silverware and white candles. I had decorated the yard with miniature white lights, making the place magical. 
We were holding a special dinner party tonight, but none of the 25 guests knew how special. They thought it was only to celebrate my graduation. Well, three people knew the real reason. The two women that had moved into my old house were helping us with the food, and we had invited a judge to perform our ceremony. Jansen had prepared a special surprise. I had a table set up just for it, with three miniature spotlights to highlight it. I slipped into the kitchen, kissed my soon-to-be husband, and asked, Ready to carry it out? Jansen inserted the last rose into the three-tiered cake, a cream-colored masterpiece with pale purple trim and edible pearls with a cascade of white roses dripping down the side. It's ready, he said. We carried our wedding cake out to the table, setting it next to a portrait of Jansen and me, wearing matching tribal print shirts and holding hands, the same shirts we were wearing tonight. My new guitar, Jansen's wedding present, sat in its stand just to the side of the wedding cake. My wedding present was inside. I had bought a new, lighter, more practical bedroom set to replace the monstrously huge bedroom set. We sold the old set, and it took six people to manhandle that giant cabinet out of the house. God, are we glad that's gone. Tonight, right before our ceremony, I'd play the song I'd written for Jansen a year ago. After a few minor adjustments of the lights to showcase the cake's beauty, I turned to Jansen and said, It kind of looks like somebody's getting married, don't you think? Jansen hugged me, and I whispered, I think it's us. Have I ever mentioned that you are the most beautiful person I've ever met? Mr. Montana, he whispered, are you trying to seduce me? We had time for one last kiss before. Ding dong. The end. Thank you, everybody, for sharing the story with me. I appreciate it. It was fun. We'll see you next Wednesday. Peace.